the jobs are all being done, I'm ready to go fishing. Unfortunately, the weather is actually too good. Have you ever heard that saying, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun? Well, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Not quite sure how this one's going to pan out. I'm, uh... There's a sign, look. <laughs> I've been here a minute. I've been here a minute. No fishing beyond this point. Uh, that way or that way? I'll just chuck my bait in there. Maybe I'll have to go to this swim. I'm, I'm... One, two, three, four yards the wrong side. I'm looking up here. Oh, there's power lines way down over there. So I figure I'm gonna to have to go into that swim there. We're not a fall foul of any local regulations, do we? I'm uh, down here at the Tony Awesome Fishing Show and on a canal, I'm not, I'm not you, know, you guys must know, I'm not a great lover of canals, <clears throat> but it's such a pretty place down here. I thought I've got to give it a go. It's probably gonna be small fish. They do get tench. I think they get the odd you know, very old carp, but at the end of the day, I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. I'm not a local, I've driven two and a half hours to get it. What a nightmare to find it. But it's a great spot. Anyway, I'm gonna move my gear back up here. I could just see the power lines over there, but you know what it's like, just, <laughs> I just threw some maggots because I saw it's really worn here and someone's fishing there. Most people catch tension at oh, four o'clock in the morning. That means with a two and a half hour drive, I'd have to leave at half past 12 or something like that. That's not going to happen, is it, guys? Drive all the way through the night for a couple of tench. Fine if you live local, I'll be down here. So I'm just going to be catching anything I can. It's probably all going to be small stuff. I've seen a lot of small stuff when I'm walking along, so who knows? Let's get rigged up. Guys, I think I'm flogging a dead horse here. <laughs> I can have three, three canoes, a kayak, and a paddle steamer the rate of guys. So I'm going to pack up, but I'm going to have to move. Just get away from the incredible number of boats out. You can't blame them all enjoying themselves, except me. Well, I've got him there, but if I go any zoom in anymore, the focus would go. It's a great big blue bodied dragonfly, double winged. Yeah, that's. Just gonna go blurred there now. Go on. Yeah. 
So, having said I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm not in love with canals, I've got a bit of a freezer clear out guys, got some slopped up old bread there, all mushed up, some frozen, well, I'll show you what they look like, frozen dead maggots, they're all going in, and soon we go in for other stuff, but I think with the bread there and the maggots, the small fish from what I've seen are going to take the maggots, but they might be slightly bigger fish take the uh, bread. I'm going to say that's the theory, but to be honest, I, I sort of haven't even got a theory today. And I'll, if I've, I've already thrown a couple of handfuls of these in, you can see they're all dead, bits of corn, bits of ground, mate. See it going in, mix it all up, they're going to eat the lot. There's so many small fish. There are so many small fish, I think that's why they use um, bread and worms, they say worms, worms are good here. Who knows people, they're going to get oh, some real perfume stuff in there. But the small fish are going to eat all the maggots, not all those, so it's sort of, I guess, a bit. Loose feed's not going to do it, I kept it really sloppy, because there's a right to left pull on it, like a runoff. Hopefully not a canal boat, I oh, hear something coming. So, tackle shop said just fish in the middle, so let's chuck it out in the middle. Now I'm watching that sink because where I threw it and where the big bits are going to land are two different things, two different spots. It might even pay me to chuck a bit in different places because the float's going to pull through the waggler. I might actually fish a ledger over there and a waggler down the bottom and run it through down there. Just throw a couple of other balls down there. It's lovely looking lilies over there. Yeah, there's little fish coming up about three or four inches. I'm just going to chuck a ball down on the edge of these lilies here. You never know. Um, with this pull and the wind, it might be worth me throwing some floating across here and let it go right down the on the current down there. Let's see where it just drifts down to. Now, they normally say fish little enough than on a canal. Mm, I don't normally have to do that. Normally chuck it in the lead hit. There's plenty of small fish here. Some little fish came up there. I think I'm going to catch small stuff, maybe small roach. But there are some good fish in it, some nice lookers. Right, let's get rigged up. Threw a piece of crust in. And already I found something interesting, because I know I'm not going to last long at this type of fishing. Loads and loads of little fish. I guess roach or rudd coming up attacking the crust, right? I'll try and film it for you. But in the margins, if I throw it out, if I throw maggots out there, they're on the maggots as they sink, they're eating them, okay? <clears throat> if I throw the bread out there, they're nibbling all around the bread for quite some time as it drifts down in the current. Now here's a bit about the float, just to give you an idea. I am using an antenna float, what's called an antenna float very fine in the tip, it has an orange top to it, and then two other sections of yellow with sort of graduation black marks there to tell you exactly how far it's going down. There is a classic bite, it goes down and away. Now, when it goes down, you just lift it into the fish, you don't necessarily have to strike hard, but you want to let the bite progress, if I can, uh, if I can mention that. You know, it's, it's not always a question that you're gonna get one of these sail away bites it can go down slowly like that and go away, then you strike. But you here you see the yellow sections are showing, they're just disappearing, just wait, 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 just disappearing, hasn't gone completely, has it? Generally, small fish can also be lion bites, but when it goes away like that, you want to strike. Here again, there are small fish bumping at it. You can go by the yellow first marker going up and down, and just when you think it's going to sail away, it's going to go under the wall, wall, wall. No, wait, wait, wait. Let that bite progress. Let them pull the float right under before you strike. By all means, strike once or twice to start with. But if you're missing them, you want to make sure you wait. If I throw it in the margin, say six feet out, I notice they twiddle around on the top, nibbling it, and they go pew. They come back, brrr, pew. Now that that generally is a sign that there's predators in there. They're probably perch or pike, that's the two main predators, but near the margin. So I'm wondering, 
am I going to get sucked down the route of predator fishing and throw some mini plugs or spoons or something around and I feel the answer is yes. I did throw a pike rod in and summer pike and can be fun if you get them up on the top action wise but I don't know there's a lot of fish there. That's just my theory. All this nibbling away on the surface does attract pike generally and or perch but the way they they spook if you like tells me they have been hunted before. So I'm going to throw some bread crust in on the surface, just let it drift down, see what happens. Might be a carp, who knows? Probably not. I think it's going to be roach and rubs, tiny stuff for me today. But you never know. An idyllic spot. I mean, I have to say, it's very, very peaceful here. Loads of cyclists, loads of people. Over on the far bush over there, there must be loads and loads of, I think the sparrows. Pretty sure that noise is sparrows. So nice to hear. And there's a boat higher place up there so I've walked and walked and walked to get as far away from people and boats as I can. Obviously I might be in a totally bad place but there's about four or five wear marks here so I figure it's an okay sort of place. I saw some fish go through there, it looked like a chub about half a pound. I'm not sure I'm not going to fish in the margins down there to be honest. I might put another little handful of bread down there because this small fish is going to demolish it. I probably haven't got enough bread. Pretty sure I've seen, seen some rud down there. They're only small fish look. But they're going to be noshing through this pretty damn quick. <laughs> Look at that, it's like piranhas. Oh my, oh my god, I definitely haven't got enough bait. It's like the feeding of the 5,000, this one. Pick up the litter, whoever that is. Tells me another angler's probably been there. Look at that cloud dust. You watch, if you watch, they just suddenly go boom and spook. I'll put some floating crust out as well. Some of those maggots are floating there. If I get the other camera, you might actually see them, how they feed, and they go like this. That tells me definitely that they, they, they've had predators here. Now, keep the maggots in the shade. I've got a mixture of, actually bought some in the tackle shop. A pint of red and whites. They're going crackers at the moment because they're overheating. So I'm probably going to put uh, a bunch on this hook. I've put bread flake on there, but there's, I've now seen so many fish in there. There's absolutely no point with the bread flake being on there longer than uh, two two or three minutes are going to chip it away. So my tip is put a load of maggots on first and you put a big piece of bread flake around the outside. I'm on a barbless hook so the maggots will wriggle off. Got a decent sized big hook, this is just for a big fish. And I'm going to pile a load of maggots on there maybe 20-30 maggots, maybe in retrospect I should have bought some worms but listen look blazing hot middle of the day half past eleven the chances of catching something other than a small fish is pretty remote. But you never know. I think I'll put some red ones on there. They still chew and gnaw all these off. At least this way, they've got something to chew on. <clears throat> and you never know. A bigger fish might see that activity, the small rudd and roach, and uh, just come along to investigate. I've no idea. I know it's dawn and dusk. I realise that with tension. I'm in the blazing, sweating sun. <clears throat> I walk past one of the elderly gentlemen fishing in the shade up there. Well, he's sensible, isn't he? You can't blame him. He's fishing in the right place. So I'm going to chuck this out where I put the ground bait. It's got one triple A shot on it. Here come the boats. Yeah, there's just too many small fish there. This is probably just a one shot deal, one rod. Right, I can't fish a second rod, people. It's just too much. Snagging in the grass. So here we go, first cast. I'm going to have to stand up, look, the fish aren't bored. There's just clouds of them down there. Let's have a look and see what they are first. I can't imagine that float lasting too long. Maggot straight off, barbless hook. Wonderful. Now, I am going to chuck. ball of ground bait down there because I just saw some bubbles come up. There is a gazillion fish in there. I just want to see what they are. I cannot see me lasting long. I feel the predator rod coming out.
Here we go, let's try again. Do you want to see what species they are? Here we go. What have we got? Roach or rud? It is. You can see there a small rud. Save the plane. I wonder what to do with this. So many. There's millions here. Now, the guy in the tackle shop said <clears throat> they pole fish here, even the length of the pole sticking out over the water like that, which I don't get, spooks the fish. Well, I think he means big fish, not these uh, millions of fry that are there. There we go. Didn't even see the float go that time. So I've got a waggler, waggler there, locked either side. And this one is a rad. Float could be doing shotting down a little bit more. I can see this is one I throw here. Yeah. Goodness me, if you go and perch or pike fishing. I can't see any other bigger fish out there, that's my problem. Ah, uh, slightly bigger. Just a little bit bigger there, look. If you hold still. Ah. Oh. What is that? Is that a disease? A bite from out from a heron or what? All right, I got a bit deeper. They just boil on the surface. Ridiculous amount of fish in here. Can you imagine what's in the whole stretch all the way down? Oh, they're straight on. I'll put a shot further down. It's made no difference at all. Guessing rad again. So look, I've gone from here in depth down to there. So I'll have another throw with a couple of maggots on, and then if I still get them, I'm going to plumb the depth, which the shop said is not very deep. And then I'm going to move most of the shot <coughs> straight down, try and get the shot through. Oh, very, very slightly bigger. I mean, look, we talk, whoops, we're talking in the bushes. We're talking marginal, talking marginal, but that's cast into the far side. Thing is, if I just strike a miss, it doesn't matter because there's another 5,000 in the middle. <clears throat> and then I can bring it in again, strike and miss again. I think the maggots are off this time. Hang on a minute, is that a slower bite? No, they've had the bait off. Right, now I get a little bit of slop further out. I'll put the BB further down here, hopefully. <clears throat> we get over there. It might sink a little bit deeper. Oh, oh no, came off, came off, came off. I think that was just weed. So I've got three maggots on there now. Mm, that's interesting. I'm going to put another, another shot on there. <clears throat> I feel there's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, yes. That did seem to do the trick. As you can see, when I first started on the service, small fish, and they are now just getting a little bit bigger. What's interesting, I've just plumbed the depth, guys. Must be one, two, three and a half feet in the middle, but just in the middle, as though there is a boating channel there. It, and yet there's lots of reeds in the middle, which I don't sort of understand, because generally if you get boats, oh, that's my plumb weight, by the way. If you get lots of boats, you generally find that um, there's no weed in the middle, the propellers have chopped it all up. So I've retackled having deposited the tackle in the hedge opposite. It's so tiny this canal, it's really two rudlers across, 
and you're in the field and up the motorway. I feel with it dropping to three and a half feet that well, I initially put the bait in the middle, might be the place to try. I think it's stand up time. I'm sure the small fish are still going to hold me, hold it all up. They're going to hammer the bait. Won't let it get down deeper where there might be a slightly bigger fish. Who knows? Now where I'm now, I'm just dragging the bottom. Look, the small fish got me straight away. Four maggots. My God, they must be on suicide watch down there. To be honest, what happens is they chew four off and leave one, which I pop over the eye of the hook. Try again. Go in the middle. They stop that shot going down. They stop it going down totally. I can see the maggot going down, even with the BB way down the line, just above the hook link, they're actually stopping the uh, float go down. Maybe I'm better off. Oh, that felt very marginally bigger. Hold on, guys. Let's just go in there again. I did chuck some bait just down here and saw a load of bubbles come up. And the small fish have got me at the moment. You can see they're doing this with the float all the time, can't quite take it under. But that's dragging bottom now, it's slowed. So if it dips under now, it should be a fish. Right, it's going to try dragging, dragging the bottom in a load of ground bait that I've. Now I can't even get, I can't even get down. I cannot get down, guys. Impossible. Look, it's just, it's just, I just can't get to the bottom. Well, I've just seen a tent swim right down there really fast. Obviously not feeding in this bright sunshine. And he rocketed, disappeared up there. So that margin in there does have fish come into it. I've tried bread, got pieces of bread flake like this on there. It does slow up the bites on the small fish. It doesn't get me any bigger ones. It doesn't get me anything at the moment. Interesting to see the tench moving though. I might pay me to go back down there and fish in the shade. My other problem is I've gone to I think to the wrong car park, which says they lock it and shut it at seven. And I wanted to stay till dusk, like nine. So the chance of anything decent is really gone. Today is yet another sort of disaster. Well, I went out in the middle, guys. Just about to move and go pike fishing. I thought I'd try a piece of bread plate in that deep channel and much better fish there. Much nicer one, so. Hope, but still small fish, but listen, it's action and I'm getting quite, quite a lot of boats here. The situation is this. When you get fish of the same stamp, and that's a nice one, you want to concentrate that same size bait that you've been using. It could be a piece of bread and I just pinch fold it, what we call pinch fold, over the hook and throw that out and it will generally always come off once it's wet under the first cast you know once that bread's wet fold it around the bend of the hook so it's flat level with the hook you'll get probably one cast out of a pinch of bread like this but very often you know where i'm fishing on that shadow line you might pick off the slightly better fish is that a roach or is that another Oh no, that, folks, is like a little skimmer bream, so something different down there. All I did then, yeah, it's much more silver. All I did then was just shallow up three inches. So the bread is doing the business, and I've certainly established there are indeed a gazillion rud in here. I think I might just give it a little bit longer. Well, what's this one? It's a little bit... No, no, a little skimmer. Hooked in the back, that one. Man, if you're going pike fishing, you'd, you'd kill for those. Now, you people must know I get really bored really quickly. Nothing's happening in front of me. I'm out there throwing up pieces of bread. Generally, the bread goes everywhere with me. A crust out on the surface can always give an indication of what's about. There could be anything, a big rud, a cart. Maybe if they've got chub in there, chub could show. So I always throw it out, obviously, when there's not many ducks around. 
Here you can see, look, that's a decent rod. Um, I think there was a run by a perch. Out there, I can't tell you what I've had. 50, 60, 100, I don't know. Just lots and lots and lots. But I cannot get a decent sized one. I'm going to have a walk down in a minute and see if I can pick one off individually on a crust, you know, without fishing blind like this. I'm just fishing with virtually the maggot skin. Tench hasn't come back, I can see over there, I will definitely see, and there's fish moving over there, but I think what I'm looking at is actually um, numbers of fish, if that makes sense. But as soon as I go further out on the baited area, they're swarming it. Yes, absolutely, peaceful, idyllic, much better moving away from that boat area. Oh, there we go. I wasn't even watching then, felt that through the rod. So there is a no shortage of rad in this canal. I cannot believe that I haven't actually got bitten off by a pike or had a perch, big perch follow in or something. So there's that much food fish in here. It's amazing, really, to be honest, that there's not predators every eight feet. They would have an absolute feast here. Be nice to catch something different. Skimmer, I feel it's one of those days. I did when I got out of the car and I had terrible trouble finding this place. I thought it doesn't bode well. You know what it's like, people. If, uh, if, it, do, if it, doesn't, it doesn't start well, generally doesn't finish well. I'm getting so many, so many false bites. So even down here, look, if I just let it sit down there. Even when the float sinks underwater, I let it sit resting on the bottom and I can see it dart away again. On the ledger rod, Zippo. They're just stripping everything. Well, I'm going to ease this one in. Just a swinger. That's the sort of stamp I'm getting now. And there seem to be red maggots. Three red maggots there. A little bit better rad. Look, it's all fun fishing. It's all fun fishing. But by golly, is it hot. Right. Whether to move or not, I don't know. I still fancy checking out some of the floating crust. But when you're getting fish like this, every so often on a float, pretty tough to move. A perch. Well, as usual with perch, it's not lip hooked, but it's still a little perch. There we go. So, getting a few fish. I mean, I must have had 10 pounds of fish, I suppose. That's still pretty good, isn't it? Here's a fish you don't see very often nowadays, or I don't anyway. It is a bleak. The River Thames used to be heaving with them. Well, our sun's going round, all my maggots have stretched. Some of them recover, as you can see. I shall still use those as dead maggots, obviously. Freeze them down. Very, very good for margin fishing. Carp, tench, roach, whatever. Out we go. Getting near the end of the day, guys. Brain's getting fried. Oh, dear. That is horrible. I'm guessing I've had <clears throat> probably... If I had a keep net, 12 or 15 pounds of fish, I would guess. All bits and pieces. But nothing over, I want to say, six ounces. 
So you can't see there's not fish in the canal. Oh, I'm missing most of them, that's on a single maggot. So worth a try, any canal. Take a bit again, used to, you've got to find the swims. I don't know, it's like 120 miles away for me. There we go, but I'm still popping a few out. That looks like a dace or a bleak. Please be a bleak. No, it's a little dace. I got that down as a little dace, that one, see him? He looks sort of bleak size. I've almost got a piece of skin on there now. <clears throat> See if they get more touchy. There's single bubbles. When I say single bubbles, little patches of bubbles come out there. We used, to, we used to call them perch bubbles. They're not to tench and they're not carp. It's generally perch feeding on the bottom. And I have had one perch, in fairness. You won't see them with this camera. Plumb the depth again and should be just tripping through. I just want it tripping through in case there's some wild chance there's a tension there. Well, there is, I've seen them swim past twice. Well, I was going to say for the evening, there's absolutely no point. I've seen two tench all day and they're racing up and down as tench do in a really hot weather. <clears throat> and even these rudder have slowed up now and they should really be coming on and coming on the surface more. There's a bigger shadow line over there. Generally good sign. But I just cannot stay because the car park I'm in says it shuts at seven. And I'd like to stay till nine to have a chance at tent. So I think I'm in the wrong car park. But it is what it is. Main thing is I've had a few fish. And still getting bites and still missing them. What I do notice, even though I'm getting mostly rudd there, eventually another species is going to show up. And the smaller you go with the bait, generally the smaller the fish. And in this case, I started to get a series of bleak, which, you know, I haven't seen for years. The bottom jaw protrudes above the top jaw, and they got a sort of olive green to the back, very thin laterally, what they call laterally compressed. And I started knocking those out, and they're generally a surface feeding fish. The last bit of stodge going out there. A little bit short, but I'm sure it's not going to make too much difference. Hang on, I'm stolen my float. Gone again. Still going with fish, but well, I can't grumble. I've had a good day, haven't I, really, guys? Just size of the fish. I think 20 to 6. Time I get back to the car, I think I've, I think I've had enough of small fish bashing. Well, I've got to tell you, I sort of, I've sort of enjoyed today because it's, it's, it's been relatively quiet. I can see it's a lovely spot. I picked probably the worst time to come fishing here. Low water conditions, hot, droughty, middle of the day, and expecting to catch big rad and tench. No, it's dawn and dusk. It is what it is. I've caught a load of fish. I'm quite happy with that. But I think it's time. I've loaded up here now. Not often I pack up early and wind in, as you know, but I think I've had enough. I've had about 12, 15 pounds of bits and pieces. So I've had a good day's fishing mixed bag, and that's what it's all about. Catch up with you guys in the next film.